Over the years, they kept changing the color of plastics, and uh, this was one of the heavier, by a few grams. Again, it looks like it's been hardly thrown, if thrown at all. White, the orange tips, the new ones are yellow. And uh, this was 1981. Real, that's a man's boomerang there. Okay. You know, when, when we started the film, Rick, we had to zoom in on a red boomerang with my logo. That was my boomerang, well used. Here is, look at this. That is the big gem. This is Herb's art. I want you to notice, I hope you can see this on the video, how sharp and bright these colors are. Ordinarily, after 20 years, those colors should be faded. Can you zoom in on that, Rex? Okay. okay. But her, you, you can actually feel this detail. So Herb was very strong, and he would almost emboss these lines into the boomerang. I'm going to turn it over. This was made in June 1977. So this is one of the first boomerangs I ever got, the first loads of boomerangs from Herb. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Because I have one other item in here. This is something else you don't get to see anymore, not of this quality. And you already know what it is, because we're looking at the shape. A throwing stick. Isn't that beautiful? And if you come in, can you get in on it? I want people to see the, um, the grooves. This is what you look for in, in real good sticks, is this grooving. It's smooth on the end down here. I'm going to turn it over just a moment. The back side is not grooved. But you can see the chop marks where the artist, the, the uh, native, was chopping it. Interesting thing about throwing sticks and all the natural wood boomerangs, when the uh, maker would be out in the bush going walkabout and found his tree he wanted to cut down or make a boomerang out of, he would cut it down, he would dig a hole and stick the log into the ground about halfway. He would chop on both sides, let the ground hold the boomerang, when he got halfway done, he'd pull it out of the ground, stick it back in the ground, and finish the other end. And he'd do the incising at the same time. Then he'd take it back. He didn't have to carry a big old heavy log back to his, uh, his uh, campsite with him. Very heavy. This, is, this was made in 1966. It's authentic. And that is this collection. I want to show you one other thing. Okay, now, this is the difference between a brand new mint condition boomerang and one that's been thrown a little bit. Now, uh, these are very large boomerangs. I didn't throw them that much, but if you can zoom in, you can definitely see that this was probably thrown a little bit. Actually, we can really get the back side. You can see the wear on the back side here, right there where the paint was worn. There is no wear here. Again, I probably threw this 10 or 15 times and that was it. So that's this collection. I'll be doing a, a special sheet on this before long. You'll never see boomerangs like this in this condition again. It's very, very unusual. I'm excited about it. I hope you are also. Okay. Good. Say when. When? Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and just get a little picture here. I'll use this little bamboo didgeridoo to explain what again. This is a stick around beta, rusty harding, easy floater. The Aboriginal tourist boomerang, Lauren Hawes' Silky Spinner, Silky Oak. The Kylie from Australia, 1966. Herb Smith, Big Jim boomerang. The Bakewood 51, Rusty Harding's Mabinga, 110. The Big Red by Herb Smith, Herb Smith Hook. The Mini Hurricane by Rusty Harding. The Mark I ABS hand carved plastic by Jack Thomas. German Sport Comeback, plastic. The uh, four blade of cherry wood by uh, Flying Trees, Rusty Harding, Ben Rude, Napoleon Hat, Jeff Lurie's hook, Bunny Reed's witchy proof contest hook, Mick Hansen's book, Herb Smith's book, and then of course the boomerang book by Klutz Press. And also is we started the tape off with a didgeridoo. That is an authentic Aboriginal made didgeridoo, eucalyptus wood. And I'm not going to play any more for it, but that's very heavy. This is the bamboo one we made. Okay. Close it out with. Huh? Close it out.
Okay, I like this. And play. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll blow up magic, magic on the boomerang. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do is... These are Michael Gerben boom, uh, t-shirts. Gel boomerangs. Some of his early work. In a moment I'll model one that I'm wearing as I begin to show you the second part of the uh, boomerang tape that I'm doing right today. And this is the back side of the same, that's the front side of Rex's t-shirt. And this is the back side of the one with the pretty lady in the front, which I should say my wife looks really good in. Michael no longer does t-shirts of this type, unfortunate. <clears throat> okay, this is a layout of some boomerangs I'm going to explain in just a moment. These are all used. All used boomerangs. Now, Rex, come up here just a minute. This is a gel shirt. And you can see gel with all the boomerangs he did. Backside there. Nothing on the backside. There is no backside? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I forgot. The other shirts did. But I thought Michael did a lot of good artwork. Okay, now let's get down here on this pad. Get out of and here. I want to show a few quick ones here. Grandkids are back in the room, that's okay. These are two Herb's hooks. One that I, Herb sent me black painted. These are all my used boomerangs. 45, 50 yard boomerangs. You can see these are well used, but they're not for sale. This is a collection. All right. Time out. This is a collection of Bunny Reed's boomerangs. This is the junior hook, the regular witchy hook, the 16 inch coach wood and then the big old 19 inch. If you could find any of these in the coach wood, you've got a semi collectible boomerang. This is a Jeff Joe a Timbery plywood boomerang from about 1976 77, made by Joe Timbery, marketed by Duncan McLennan of Sydney, Australia. Large traditional type boomerangs. This is. A Gerhard hook me out of dogwood that came off of Barnaby Roo's farm. Ben Roo sent Al Gerhard some of these, a log of this dogwood. Al stripped it up into uh, strips and made some dogwood hooks. Rex finished the boomerang out. Uh, it's just hanging them all on my wall. It's a beautiful boomerang. This is a Rod Jones flag art boomerang, which I, this is mine, beautiful flyer. Now, this you can see how well worn it is. I'm going to show you a virtually brand new one. And of course, this is Rusty Harding's Mini Hurricane. And I believe this one would go about 50 yards, if I remember right. I'm amazing. These are three tomahawk boomerangs. This is the original Rusty Harding. And you can always tell Rusty's, he had the string on it, the way this is made right here. The wing's a little bit different, and the head. This was number four. These are two that Rex made. Uh, we did work certainly like everyone else we you copy a winner we did change it we changed the head shape we changed the wing shape a little bit this was one that was the same color as a local university very we very well worn as you can see uh oh okay now cut that a minute rex because everyone recognizes those this is a rod jones flag art boomerang virtually brand new it has a little blem right here the boomerang was not thrown. They were really for display purposes only. On the back side are the names of all the participants in that first World's Cups. That's a highly collectible boomerang. Then we have one of Kimo Zulu's original hat art boomerangs. Very nice. Natural wood on the back side, hand painted on the front. Here's a Rod Jones Christmas boomerang. Again, from the same gentleman's collection. Slight blem right here, signed on the back. It's been thrown just a touch. These are two more of Rod's boomerangs. Little blem right here. Little use, but actually they aren't they aren't thrown. Signed, beautiful decorative boomerangs. This is Rod's flag art. Slight little blem here. 
I don't know if my friend Joe threw this. I don't think he ever threw this. But as you can see, slight difference. Mine is well worn, this one isn't. And this is called the Joe's Collection. One more, a Herb Smith Tornado. Big lead weight right here. It has been used. A good thrower should see 100 to 120 yards with this boomerang. Paxilin, it's signed on the back. Weighted Tornado, March 1988. And signed, car by Herb Smith, Sussex thing. That's from, this is all right from here is from the Joe collection, which I'll be auctioning off again. And we'll go to a box of my goodies in just a moment, okay? These are two of my early Herb Smith Red Sussex Boomerangs. This was unweighted, you saw that earlier in the film. Can you see it all right? And then this is one of the trapezoidal booms, broken many times, weighed weight here, here, and here, damaged. I didn't know how to throw when I first received this boomerang. Uh, not even dated sign to the back side. This one is, it's all faded. But anyway, these two I will be selling. Somebody wants them. This is a big black mamba, number S19. That's not me. No, the boot. Okay, oh, you like that, all right. Uh, very large, very heavy, well used. 75, 80 yard boomerang. It's just too much my arm anymore. Then we get into some more Sussex hooks. And this is S1. Bring them down. Very much used. S2, broken right in the center right here, been repaired, lead weight each tip. Another one, this is a five weighter, S4. Lead weights here and here. This is probably the very first one I ever got from Herb. There's a blem, you can see it's broken right there. Then this was another one, S5. Never lend a friend a boomerang. They'll break them for you. Well, broken, repaired many times, probably still flyable, but it's a way to collect and own a Herb Smith boomerang. This is my big ribbon we showed earlier. That's number uh, S20, S standing for Smith. It's a very good condition. This is one, direction member shooting this out of the tree with the BB, with the uh, air rifle. <laughs> uh, lead weights here, here, and here. This is a sportsman, been repaired here. Uh, this boomerang has seen a lot of use. It's still usable, but I no longer throw it. This is one, the Vampire Black Boomerang. This is number S8, the commercial signature of Herb Smith right here, made by his little factory that he had for a little while, the father and son cabinet maker was making boomerangs for him. Not a bad little boomerang. Leading it, trailing edge, leading edge, trailing edge, leading edge. Typical. This is a commercial made sportsman by Herb Smith, uh, S9, yeah, I think it's an S. <laughs> Again, it's signed on the back side right here. This is a, a sycamore. Sycamore. This was a commercial boomerang. Again, that's what he Herb didn't personally make this one. S10, very good flying boomerang. I have two lead weights in the dingle wing for some strange reason. As you can see, it's very well used. Great flying boom. I ought to pull it out and throw it again, but my arm's getting a little tired, as they say. S15, very nice. If you recall early in the film, I showed you the big red boom, the uh, big Jim Smith boomerang with the bright colors on it. Notice these are slightly faded. It's been out in the regular light. Uh, signed in the back by Herb. It's in very good condition. Then this is a, uh, this is repaired. Lots of epoxy right here. These are steel weights in each end. Herb tried steel weights for a while. S16, Herb's flower art. Great flying boom in its day. 1977, June of 77. That was the same year as that uh, Big Jim, wasn't it? I believe that was shown a minute ago. And then this is the mother. This is heavy, eight or nine ounces. It had lead weights, two lead weights in the dingle wing, a lead weight in the trailing wing, which I replaced with epoxy, which is too heavy for me. Signed in the back, Herb's logo on the front. 